microevolution and macroevolution. What's the difference and why is it important? Well, whether you're a creationist or you're an evolutionist, it's very, very important to try to understand what these terms mean and wrap your head around them so that you can be informed uh, as you're approaching different kinds of uh, research that's being presented or maybe something you see on Discovery Channel or read National Geographic, you want to be able to understand these things and be able to interpret the evidence that's being handed to you, okay? So, microevolution. Let me define that one first. Microevolution can simply be defined as this. It is change within a species. Change within a species. So, for instance, uh, look at all the different breeds of dogs that we have, or all the different breeds of horses that we have. And yet, all those different types of dogs, they're still dogs. All those different types of horses, they're still horses. They haven't become something different. This is examples of microevolution, change within a species or within a kind. Uh, whenever we do studies in uh, college or high school, we do genetic studies. Typically, the animal that we like to use to study is the fruit fly. Okay, time flies like an arrow, fruit flies like a banana. Okay, never mind. All right, so we study the fruit fly. Why? Because it only has four chromosomes. It makes it really easy to study genetically. And we have mutated literally the wings off these fruit flies. We've mutated them so much, we have no wing fruit flies, two wing fruit flies, four wing fruit flies. We have uh, fruit flies with red eyes and fruit flies with white eyes. We have fruit flies with bristles. We have no bristles. We have liberal, we have conservative. We have every possible type of fruit fly. You can imagine we've got them out there. But guess what? They are still fruit flies. They haven't changed even though in laboratories we have well over a thousand consecutive generations that we have forced mutations on, they continue to remain fruit flies. They haven't changed, okay? This is an example of microevolution. So what's an example of macroevolution? Exactly, there is none. There's no example that we have of macroevolution other than our interpretation of the fossil record, right? We look at the fossil record and we find an animal like Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is that amazing, amazing half bird, half lizard. It's got the skull of a lizard with these teeth and this long tail and it's covered with feathers. But guess what? It was perfectly capable of flight. Even though it had a lizard body and it had half lizard, half bird, um, a lot of people say that that is that transition species that shows the macroevolutionary leap from a reptilian theropod-like animal into that of a bird, okay? I would argue that it's not the case simply because this. If you look at an evolutionary timeline where they lay out the evolution of bird from theropod dinosaur to bird, you will notice that Archaeopteryx is way up there right next to modern birds. Why? Because it has asymmetrical wing feathers, it's fully capable of flight, it's got a, it's got a wishbone, a furcula, um, it has all of those things that are designed to show that that animal can fly. Problem. It is millions of years older than everything that was supposed to have evolved into it. It is the oldest of the fossils. And you can't have two people getting together and giving birth to great, 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 great grandpa. It doesn't work that way. So even though that's our speculation or uh, atheistic evolutionist, that's their speculation as far as how these birds could have arrived, the timeline is completely messed up. So really there's no evidence for that at all. So what evidence actually is there? What evidence is there is that Archaeopteryx was an odd duck. It was just weird, and, but that's okay. A lot of weird animals are out there in the fossil record. No problem with that. So then what other evidence is presented for the macroevolution? Right, once again, none. We only have the speculation that we use to interpret our fossil record or other things, that's what we're using to come up with the macroevolution. We actually do not have physical, physical evidence of macroevolution occurring. It is only through our interpretation of uh, things around us that we get that. When we actually observe nature, we only see microevolution. 
And that is actually how God laid it out as he lays it out in Genesis. He said, let each animal reproduce after its kind. Now, kind is different from species. Species is a human creation. It is a human category. Remember, God said to Adam, name all the animals. We're still trying to do that scientifically and come up with this great classification system that we can use, whether it's cladistics or uh, traditional taxonomy. We're still trying to come up with this classification system of naming all these organisms that we find in this amazing creation around us. So we're still trying to do that. But when we talk about a species, that is a grouping, a category that mankind has come up with. We do not find the term species in Scripture. So when God created a kind, he based it on reproductive capabilities and not based on species. That's our category. So whenever an individual comes to you and says, hey, this is a new species and therefore this shows macroevolution, mm-mm. Because a new species doesn't necessarily mean a new kind. We don't necessarily know exactly what God meant by kind other than he based it on reproductive capability. Let each animal reproduce after its kind. Let each type of animal reproduce fruit after its kind. So that seems to be the God category of things and not species. So there is a difference in those. That said, microevolution, we see tons of evidence for microevolution as if God created a creation that was designed to be dynamic, changing, flexing, moving, uh, adapting. What he did not seem to do was to create one that was based on evolution. We really don't see the evidence for that. It's just not out there except for our interpretation of the fossil record. And that's the difference between micro and macro evolution.